Today we're going to look at probability and set notation. So the learning goals for this lesson are that we'll be able to recall how probability is calculated, use Venn diagrams and two-way tables to illustrate events, and we're going to be able to use set notation to describe events. So remember the following uh, definitions, that um, a trial is a sim single experiment, so like flipping a coin, the sample space is the list of possible outcomes, so for a coin it would be heads and tails, or for uh, rolling, a, rolling a die it's uh, values 1 to 6. The outcome is a possible result, any one possible result. The, an event is the favourable outcome or outcomes, so the favourable outcome for rolling a die might be uh, to roll greater than a 4. The probability of an event can be found using the, this following formula here, and that's just saying that probably the uh, probability of any event is the number of different outcomes in the event divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So the number of outcomes in the event, that's the number number that we really care about, it's the number of favourable outcomes. So if it's the values greater than four rolling a die, then it's five and six are the ones that we care about, two. There are two um, outcomes that we care about. The total possible outcomes are six, so it'll be two divided by six, which is one third. The complement of the event A is A dash. So A and A dash. If the event is A, A dash means not A. So any of the uh, events that are not part of A. So if we're looking at the values greater than four for rolling a die, then the complement of A is the values that are four and below. The complement of A, because it's all of the values that are not going to occur in the event we care about, and A is the, va uh, the number of events that we do care about, if we add all of those together, that's the total possibilities, the total number of uh, outcomes in our sample space. So it means that the probability, if we add those two probabilities together, it'll equal one. The probability of something occurring and it not occurring must be one. It must be certain that it's either gonna occur or not occur, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. So that, that means that if we take those, uh, the probability of the complement of A, it's one, take away the probability of A actually occurring. So we can use that formula here to, to illustrate that idea. Now something we haven't looked at yet in detail is something called set notation. It's a way of being able to write down um, events, outcomes, um, and list possible, possible outcomes and, and um, elements that could occur. So we can have, an ex we've got an example of a set here that's the set, it's, a, it's looking like a set of odd numbers from one to nine. Uh, so we might, we might be taking that subset A out of the sample space of all of the numbers, integer numbers from one to 10. N in brackets A is the number of elements in A, so it's the number of different possible uh, outcomes in that set. So for, for our example above here, the number of elements in our set A is five. There are five different numbers there, one, two, one three, five, seven, and nine, five different numbers. The total sample space is denoted by uh, S, uh, omega, U, or, um, or chi here. So these are two different um, Greek letters that you might see around. The most common ones that are used though are S and Omega. A null set or the empty set is a set with no elements. So it's possible to have a set that doesn't have anything in it um, and it's denoted by a set of empty curly brackets or um, a sort of a zero with a line through it. If elements belong to both, to two different sets, so they belong to A, it's an outcome for A, and it's an outcome for B, they belong to both sets, then that's what we call the intersection. It's the intersection of those two, um, those two sets. And so we can call, we call that A intersection B, and we give the symbol uh, of the intersection with a sort of an upside down U, a kind of a cap here. Um, if elements belong to either of the events, A or B, um, we, that makes up the union A, union B, which has got this symbol, it's the, it's the intersection symbol, but upside down, it's like a U or a cup. Um, and we can then say we can combine the elements from A and the elements from B into this new set, A, uh, union B. We, un we um, create them, push them, put them together. Uh, A only means all the elements in A, but not in any other set. 
A only means all the elements in A but not in any other set. So that's where we say, well, it's the elements that are in A, but it's the also the elements that are not in B. Okay, so, so the complement of B, the elements that are in A but not in B. Uh, that's, that's the set A only. Uh, so it's the, own, it's the ones that belong to only to A and not to any other set. It's important to note as well that uh, if we take the set A and we find the intersection in B and we find that there are no sets in, there's no elements in common, there's nothing that intersects A and B, we get the empty set. If we intersect A and B, then that is called, then we say that A and B are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive. Exclusive. That means there are no elements in A that are also in B. They don't share any elements at all. So let's have a look at how we can represent these intersections um, using Venn diagrams and two-way tables. So for our Venn diagram on the left here, the intersection of A and B is represented as the, uh, the, the part that is common to both. So that's the number of elements that are intersected with A and B. And we've got one element that is the, sa that is, um, the same in, in set A and in set B. If we have a look outside of any of the circles there, that's the number of elements that aren't in A or B. So they're in neither set. That's the intersection of what's not in A and what's not in B. The, uh, if we have a look at our value 4 here, that's all of the elements that are in B but are not in A. Oops, A, A dash there. So that's all of the elements that are in B but not in A. And then if we have a look at our value 3 here, that's all of the elements that are in A but not in B. So it's the intersection of A and not B. So this is also, uh, we say it's A only. That's how it's only in A and not in anything else. And the one on the other side there, the value four, that's the number of elements that are in B only. Okay, number of elements that are in B only. And we can see these values represented on our uh, two-way table as well. So the value one there is the number of elements that are in A and B. It's the A intersection B. The, if we have a look moving along to the next one along that uh, row, that's the number of elements that are in B and not in A. And we can see that this value 4 here, it's in the column that's not A and the column that's not B. So that's the intersection here. This is the intersection of not A and B. We can see that there. And this one here, this value 1 here, that's the intersection of A and B. We can see that there. So if we continue um, and have a look at our values here, the value for three, that's the intersection of A and not B. And we have our value for two here is the intersection of not A and not B. As we go along the rows and the columns, we can total the uh, elements that are in the total in B, the total in not B, the total in A, the total in not A, depending on where we're looking on our grid. So looking along the top here, um, for the, our first row, our B row here, that's the number of elements that are in B. The next row down is the number of elements that are not in B. So there are five elements that are in B and five elements that are not in B. We also see um, for our columns, this is the number of elements that are in A, and this is the number of elements that are not in A. The last value we have is the absolute total, and that has to be the sample space. So that's the number of elements that are actually in the sample space S for this, uh, for this case. Let's look at an example of how we can um, you know, uh, represent this. Um, so the first part, the first question that we're being asked is to represent our um, values in sets A and B in a Venn diagram. So let's have a look A and B. So we can see where, when we look at the question, there's events A and B from the first 10 positive, positive integers. So that's our sample space. Our sample space is the first 10 positive integers. So we can see here there are some values that are not in A or B. We can see that we've got um, the values 9 and 10 
they're not in A or B. So those values are going to be outside of our A and B. We can have a look at what's common to A and B. Uh, the values 1 and 3 are common to both A and B. And we can also see that there are some values that are only in A and only in B. So the values that are only in A are 2, 4, 5 and 6. The values only in B are 7 and 8. So we should be able to have all 10 positive integers in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All 10 positive, first 10 positive integers are there in our Venn diagram. Now B, we're asked to list the sets A union B and A intersection B. So if we look at the A intersection B first, they're the values that intersect, that are common to both. So the values that are common to both are 1 and 3. If we have a look at the union of both A and B, then it's all of the values that are in A or B. So, or both. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are all in A or B, or both. Our, now we're asked for C to determine the probability that event A union B will occur. The event A union B will occur. So if we look at our notation, probability of A, sorry, intersection B, not A union B, that's going to be the number of values in A union B. A uh, intersection B, sorry, divided by the number in the sample space. So the number that we have in A union B is 2, and the sample space is 10. So that means our probability is 1 fifth. We have a look at D, we're asked to evaluate whether or not the events A and B are mutually exclusive. And we can say that no, they're not mutually exclusive as uh, they're are some elements contained in the intersection of A and B. To write this mathematically, we can say that the intersection of A and B is not the null set. So we're saying the intersection of A and B is not the null set. That means that the two events aren't mutually exclusive. Let's look at our second example here. From a class of 30 students, 12 enjoy cricket, 14 enjoy netball. And out of those 12 and 14 that enjoy cricket or netball, six enjoy both. So we're asked to il illustrate the information as a Venn diagram and a two-way table. Starting as a Venn diagram, starting with a Venn diagram, we need to write our two different sets. So our sets are cricket and netball. We know that six enjoy both cricket and netball. And out of that uh, six for um, 12, 12 oh, sorry, out of the 30 students, 12 enjoy cricket. So that's six plus the six, 12 of those students enjoy cricket. 14 students enjoy netball. So that means from uh, the, there are six that also enjoy cricket, so that must mean there are eight that enjoy cricket, uh, that enjoy netball, but not cricket. Because in our total netball circle here, we can see there are six plus eight, 14. So if we add those up, that's 12 plus eight is 20. There are 30 students in the class. That must mean that 10 students don't enjoy cricket or netball. If we were to draw up a two-way table now, Drawing up a two-way table here to illustrate our sets and the number of elements in each set. We've got here, this will be, uh, I'll call this cricket and not cricket. That's just not cricket. And there we've got uh, netball and not netball. So the student, number of students that enjoy both cricket and netball is six, that's our intersection. The number of students that enjoy neither is 10 outside. So not cricket and not netball. The number of students that enjoy netball but not cricket is eight. And the number of students that enjoy cricket but not netball is six. So we can add up our totals here. 12, 18, 14, and 16. 
and our total is 30 here. So we can add up those totals there. So we're asked to state now the number of students who enjoy netball only and cricket nor netball. And then we're going to look at finding some probabilities. Okay, so the first is netball only, the number of students that enjoy netball only. We can see netball only is this section of our Venn diagram, netball only, netball but not cricket. So the number of students that enjoy netball only, we can write N only, that's going to be equal to eight. Neither cricket nor netball is the number of students in the intersection of, of sorry, N, not cricket, not netball and not cricket. So here, that's our number who aren't in cricket or netball, that is 10, okay? That is 10. So, lastly, we're looking at here, finding the probability that a person chosen at random will play netball. So the number of students that, play, well, what we need to write here for C part I is the number of students, well, we're asked for the probability, aren't we? The probability that a student will play netball. That's going to be the number of students playing netball divided by the number of students in the sample space. So the number of students that play netball is 14 out of a possible of 30 students. So that's 7 fifteenths. That's the probability that students will play netball for both netball and cricket. So C part II, both netball and cricket. There are some students, uh, so we, we can find the probability that they'll enjoy both netball, uh, what, are we, what are we saying, both cricket and netball. So that's going to be the intersection of cricket and netball. That means that we're looking at the number of students who are playing cricket and netball divided by the number of students in the sample space. So the number of students that play cricket and netball is six out of a total of 30 students. So the probability is one fifth there that they will enjoy or play both cricket and netball. So let's think about our learning goals again. We've reviewed and revised over um, the how to calculate probabilities. We've had a look at how to represent situations using Venn diagrams and two-way tables. And we've also been able to look at how we can use set notation to represent those.